What's up, bros? Welcome to another BroGraph motion graphics tutorial. I'm Matt Milstead, and today we're going to be having some fun. We're going to be creating 2D characters in Cinema 4D uh, and rigging them up using IK chains. Uh, now it's very similar to almost like they're almost like puppets in a way. And so these IK chains will drive the arm movements and the bending and the leg movements, and uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'll show you an example of what it looks like. We're going to be creating this right here with a neat little walking cycle. So we may not create the whole environment, uh, but yeah, so we've got this neat little walk cycle that we're going to go ahead and make. So uh, to start off, if Illustrator doesn't crash on me, it's crashed on me every single day just by doing nothing. Um, we started off with this Illustrator file of this character, and as you can see, we've got it broken up. Oh, we've got a bunch of different mouths. We've got the eyes. Um, we've got the head by itself, the top arm, the torso. And all those are broken up into individual pieces. So what we did, what I did, uh, this character, by the way, was created by uh, a friend of mine named Nick Eckel. He's one of the, the most amazing artists I have ever met. And uh, he was kind enough to let us use this uh, this uh, model or this uh, illustrated illustration uh, for uh, purposes. Yeah, so anyway, I took each of the individual pieces. For example, I took this pelvis. And we want to be able to bring in each of these individual items as um, pieces, um, as outlines. So, for example, I took this pelvis and then I outlined the entire thing. And in my Pathfinder, I just did Unite. And then I save this path, save as, as an Illustrator 8 file. So I'd call it like uh, uh, Pelvis Outlines, you know, uh, then I hit Save. Uh, and it would save it out as an Illustrator 8. That's the most important. Let me show you that again. Pelvis outlines, save, and then Illustrator 8. That way we can get the outlines. So then you hit OK, blah, blah, blah. And then you will go into Cinema 4D um, and import each of them, file merge objects, Let's see, text, I've got some outlines here somewhere. Let's just do like this left calf. So uh, scale, that's fine, connect splines, that's fine. And then we have get we got the calf, and it comes with a bunch of different stuff sometimes. Uh, so you just wanna find the calf, bring it up, and then delete the rest. And then you can uh, you can change the coordinates if you want. But what what's going to happen is when all of them come in, uh, they're all going to be in all sorts of different weird places, like net left calf. And so you'll need to uh, actually go through, as you can see, I've already done it here, and move them all to the correct place wherever they're supposed to go. So the left calf would be right there. And then just line them all up. So once we've done that, um, I went through and I went ahead and renamed everything to what they were. That's a good practice. Uh, it really helps you to uh, keep organized. And um, okay, so once you've done that, then we're going to go through and we're going to uh, set an extrude for each one. So for example, let's start with the head and then you'll extrude the head just a little bit. And then I'm going to go through and I'll make one for each one. Now you could, well, with stuff like this, it is possible to throw them all into one extrude and just click on the hierarchical, um, if that's the correct way to say it. But we're gonna be turning these into editable uh, polygons later. Uh, so we don't wanna throw it into the hierarchical. So anyway, I'm just gonna do a few real quick so that you guys can see what we're doing, because I've got it set up. So you can see we've got this, and with the uh, with some of these, like the left arm and stuff, I've actually moved it back in Z space to keep it to where it's not on the same space as that. As you can see, our head is just a little bit forward because if it was all in the same space, uh, uh, they would have weird intersections and stuff like that. You wanna make sure that everything is just a little bit layered differently. Uh, so yeah, okay, so once you've gone through and done that, um, I'll show you, I've got my character extruded, and then, actually, yeah, I wanted to show you, so I started off, and see everything is just flat and straight on, 
and you can't tell it right you can't tell right now but if once we get textures on here if they were flat against each other they would be uh they'd be getting all sorts of weird geometry and see right now look at his his hand i mean you can't see the hand and the arm it just looks really weird right now <laughs> so you uh we need to change the depth on all of that so i'll go ahead and do that we're going to take this arm and we're going to move it forward Okay, and then we're going to move the forearm uh, a little bit backwards so that we've got it behind this uh, the sleeve of his shirt and the hand in front. And then everything, yeah. So then the legs, this back leg, this back calf, and the foot are all going to move backwards. And we're going to have to change the anchor points on all these as well. Uh, but we'll get to that once we move all these things into the right places. All right, so we will move that forward. And then that should be good. Then we'll move that forward just a little bit too. And we'll move this knee just a little forward so that we've got that area on top of both the thigh and the shoe. And then we'll grab these back arms right here. Let's see. Uh, left arm, forearm, and hand. Then we'll move this back in Z space. We'll make sure that that doesn't intersect with anything. Actually, we'll move this a little bit backwards some more so that we've got that behind the sleeve as well. And that should be good. We'll be able to, oh, nope. We need the head and the eyebrows as well. Eyebrow, eyebrow. We'll move that forward a little bit, and then we'll move the eyebrows. And it's okay to have these things actually intersecting because um, now when you're in like a, a perspective mode, you know, you'll be able to see it, uh, the sides. But if you're really going to go into like 2D animation uh, with this, if you do the front mode, you won't be able to see it intersecting like that. So as you can see there, uh, let's turn off our... So yeah. All right, so we've got that all set up, and now what we have to do is we actually have to um, texture our character. Now you can see I've got a whole bunch of textures here because I already went through it, and this is actually the second time I've recorded this because I hit mute on my microphone, and then it didn't record the rest of what I was saying after seven minutes. It's an, that, that last one was an hour and a half. So uh, just to show you, for example... Um, I'm going to make a new material and I'm going to click off color and reflectance and only work in luminance. And then in luminance, we're going to load an image. Do, 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 IK chain text. And then we'll do the head. And then, so I went through in Photoshop and I took each of these individual um, items. And one important thing if you've got an outline, like a black outline or something, uh, a good practice on this is to create a new layer and then fill the background uh, with the color of the outline. And the reason for doing that, I know it looks weird, but when you're mapping the stuff on, I'll show you because this head has a white layer on it. So let's see, we're going to make this cubic and we're going to change our scale. Uh, length U. Do, do, do. Then actually, I'm going to go into this mode. There we go. So that I can move this. It's showing up really small for some reason. Oh, probably because my head is so big. Okay, edit image. Oh, I grabbed the Illustrator file. Whoopsie. I need to. So you need to save each of these out as a PSD. Um, in order to get it looking very nice. So let me go ahead and grab the head color PSD. Uh, head color PSD. There we go. Much better. And as you can see, let me edit this image real quick and I'll show you when I turn off this layer what happens. Reload. So you get this white around it and when you're trying to uh, scale everything correctly and uh, map it on, you'll sometimes get these little white areas 
and it makes it it makes it difficult to really uh, get it perfect, if that makes sense, to line it up perfectly. So what I will do, see, you've got these little white marks right here. And so even when you work on it really well and kind of move it on there, it's really hard to get rid of just the fine little white things. And what we're going to do actually on our texture is we're going to change our selection to C1, which means it's only on the caps, or it's only on the front cap. So see how we've got some little white dots right there. So that's why it's important to go into Photoshop and just kind of fill it with the uh, stroke layer, or whatever the stroke color is. And then you'll see, once we get it there, uh, let me reload my texture. Doot, doot. Reload. Now you see, it's good and clean there. And so you can, it, it gives you a little bit of leeway on whether or not you get this entirely correct. So let's see, then we'll move this just a little bit that way, just a little bit up so that we've got some good strokes. See, then it doesn't have to be entirely accurate. And so here's another thing that I do. I'll create like a, another black uh, luminance, another channel with just black, do, do, do. Okay, and then I'll throw that onto the head, making sure the, the one on the caps is uh, in front, and then that'll make everything black, everything around it. So if you're working in perspective mode instead of front mode, and you kind of move into this direction, it kind of gives it like a neat, like thicker stroke, depending on where you're at, which I really like. I think that's pretty cool. So anyway, you go through the rest and uh, go ahead and uh, texture those. So, yeah, let's see if I have done that on my other one. So I went through and I went ahead and textured everything uh, through the materials on. And then, yeah, so what I've got to do now is um, set up our anchor points correct. So as you can see, they're all hitting right in the center right there. So what we do is we click on the enable axis and we're just going to go ahead and move these to the correct places. I'm going to go into front mode and see, check that out. So he looks pretty good in front mode. That's pretty neat. Uh, so eyebrow right there, right eyebrow. We're going to go right about there. The head is going to be right around the neck area. Uh, pelvis will probably stay right about where the hips are. Torso, let's go ahead and do, what do we want to do? Probably right in the center. Let's see, left arm, I can't really see this. Let me go into my left arm layer. I saw load it. Okay, left arm, we want that right about the shoulder. Let's go ahead and do the right arm too, since I've got those layers on. So then right about the shoulder, turn that off. Uh, right forearm is my pink. So we want that right about where the elbow is. Oh, that was the left. Right, we want over here. Left forearm, that's good. Unsolo that. Then the hand, we want right about where the wrist is. Uh, left hand, where's my right hand? Right hand, wrist is. And then left leg, about there, left calf. Uh, where the knee is, left shoe, where the ankle is. And then we'll do the same on this one. And we should be good to go. Uh, right knee, right shoe, where the ankle is. Okay, I'm actually going to take this whole left leg and I am going to, oops, got to get out of naval axis mode. I'm going to put the left leg right there. And I'm going to move the right leg to about right there. So it's a little bit tighter. All right, so there we go. We've got that set up. Now what we need to do, we've got everything textured, we've got everything, our character all uh, extruded and our anchor points correct. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to make everything editable. So there's no coming back. Uh, you can either, once you make things editable, uh, but you can either save, do an uh, incremental save. Uh, but what I like to do is I'll take all my stuff and I'll duplicate it and put it into a null and just call this ref. 
uh, and then just turn it off. So if I ever need to go back to it for some reason, I'll have it. So let's go ahead and just select all these and make them editable. And we're gonna want to do 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 do. Uh, we're gonna want to combine all of our individual objects. So uh, connect objects and delete. We're gonna select all the every all the children of the left eyebrow. We're gonna do that with the right eyebrow as well. Connect object and delete. And with the head, it's basically just connecting the caps of the extruded object uh, to the uh, part that was extruded, I guess. Uh, connect objects and delete. Do, do, do. And you'll see we're getting a whole bunch of these extra materials and stuff like that. We don't need all of them, and we can go through and actually delete the ones that we don't need because really all we need are that uh, are the the black luminance layer and then whatever the image is that is uh, mapped onto the cap. So we'll go through and we'll finish all this stuff. Do do do. Connect objects and delete. Connect objects and delete. Connect objects and delete. Connect objects. Last one. Cool. Okay. So, right shoe, right calf, and let's see. It should be the same on all of these. Let's figure out which one we don't need first. And then it is the, okay, so we don't need the first one or the third one. And then this one is going to, let's see, first one, third one, nope. And then we can delete the second one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. First one, third one, first one, and third one. We don't need those, cool. First one. Third one, we're just getting rid of all the junk that we don't need. Let's see up here, do we need any of that? Yes, we do, which ones do we need? That one, okay, and can we get rid of that? Okay, awesome, now it's nice and clean. Do, 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 and you can see that we've got black and then everything's layered correctly, cool, cool. All right, so now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna prep everything for the IK chain. And the best way to do this is to go ahead and put everything as uh, uh, children of where they're, where they would normally be. Um, so for example, we've got our character. Um, we're going to take our pelvis and our torso. Um, the pelvis is going to be a child of the torso. And we've got the left and right eyebrow are going to be children of the head. So think about it, uh, you know, the eyebrows connect to the head bone. That doesn't make sense. So anyway, uh, head will be um, connected to the torso. Left arm, left forearm, and left hand are going to be connected to the torso as well. Uh, left forearm inside the arm, left hand inside the forearm. So right forearm, right hand, and then we're going to put this in the torso as well. And then left leg, actually all of this is going to go into the pelvis. We've got calf and shoe and calf and shoe. So as you can see, we've got everything parented together. So like, for example, if we were to move the right leg, uh, yeah, you could go through and you could, you know, uh, do like this, which would be cool, but it would take you a really long time versus just using an IK chain. So what we're going to do, what's really important whenever you are working with 2D characters in a 3D environment, uh, 2D is basically just X and Y. Uh, but in 3D, you've got this Z space as well, as you can see, because we you know threw everything into Z space to have a little bit of depth. So what we want to make sure that we do is that because uh, the IK chain will set it up to where it will move in X, Y, and Z space, and we don't want that. So we need to add protection tags to each of our uh, each of our individual items uh, so that they don't move in Z space, and as well as the rotation. Um, so rotation we only want on the B. We don't want on the H or the P. Um, so we're going to go ahead and throw a, go to tag, cinema 4D tags, and do a protection tag. And we're only going to let it move in the X and Y and only rotate along the B. So we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste that into each one and keep everything pretty and organized. Do, 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 do. 
So uh, now there is one problem that we run into whenever we are uh, throwing a protection tag on it. And there's an easy way to work around it. So if I was to just go ahead and create an IK chain in like the leg right now, uh, I'll show you, it'll probably go backwards um, because of the way it is. So let's see. Oh no, it bends the right way. It doesn't always bend the right way. Um, so the best workaround for that is just to uh, pre-bend it, I guess, um, to tell it which way it needs to go. Uh, because if you normally you can go inside and add a pole and tell it which way it needs to bend, but because we've got these protection tags on there, it doesn't work entirely correctly. So uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and delete that IK chain, and I will show you. So we want to have let's see protect coordinates zero and zero and zero. Okay, so we want to kind of make it bend the way that it would normally bend. Um, so that it can kind of see where it's supposed to be going. So we'll uh, uh, select the shoe all the way to the leg and go to character, commands, create IK. And so here you see it gives us this right shoe, which we're going to rename right leg. And you see we can move that all around and it creates the cool movement of the foot. I'm going to scratch my ear here like a dog, which is weird. <laughs> all right. So that's one leg set up, and then we're going to select left shoe all the way to left leg. And you, you, you can go all the way to pelvis, but I wouldn't recommend it because I'll show you what happens. Create IK, so you've got the left shoe. It starts moving all of it, you know? And really, we only want the hands to go, or the, the legs to go. So I'll just undo that, and then I'm going to select from shoe to leg. <laughs> Uh, character commands create IK, and so we're going to call this left sh left leg. Okay, so we've got that, and then we're going, oh, see, that's what happened. I didn't bend it, so it's bending backwards. Okay, so we're just going to back up and undo that. I didn't follow my own instructions. All right, so we're going to go ahead and bend this the way it should bend, and bend that one the way it should bend, and then hopefully this should do it correctly. Commands create IK. There you go. Now it bends correctly. Don't, 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 don't. This is fun to do. Uh, left leg. Oops. EG. Okay, we got the left leg, we got the right leg. Now let's go ahead and do the arms. We're going to do character create IK. Let's see that bends right. Okay, that does bend correctly. So I didn't have to. And let's see if this one will bend correctly as well. Create IK. That one does. OK, so the only one we really had a problem with was that one. So if you run into that problem, uh, you could just go ahead and create the IK. And if you run into the problem, you'll, you'll know how to fix it. You have to just tell it where to go initially. OK, so we'll do left arm. Then we'll do right arm. <laughs> Okay, now we've got this, and what's cool is, uh, like, say we go into our front mode, you can see this looks more 2D, much more 2D, and so we've got right arm, left arm, to left leg, and because we've got everything in this uh, character, if we were to do that, it's cool yeah so anyway all right so let's go ahead and uh, I guess save that and we'll uh, let's make a little walking cycle so uh, walking cycle I believe are normally about let's see 12 24 48 frames so I'm just gonna do 90 just so we can have a little bit extra and then I'll just go ahead and move it back down so this is, uh, I believe a normal walking cycle is two seconds. So we're going to start here, and we're going to get everything set up right at the beginning. So if he's moving that way, let's see. And then we can kind of use this horizontal line, or this line as like a, uh, uh, a place where we should watch. As like the, the, the floor. There you go. So want to switch the arms and the legs that are swinging so that one's forward we actually want that one to be forward 
So that one's back. Oh, look what we got. We got a little bit of intersection here. So you can see, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. So let's see if we're able to do this without messing up our IK chain. Oh, because we've got that protection tag. That can be nasty. Uh, let's go ahead and move our leg instead. So right leg, we may have to delete our right leg um, IK chain. And then let's delete our protection tags. And then we're just gonna move it in the correct area. And that should be good right there. So we'll throw those protection tags on there and we'll just recreate our IK chain. Uh, MoGraph or character create IK. Let's make sure this does it right. Yes, it does. Okay, we're good. Then we'll call that right leg. Move it down to where the right leg is. All right, let's go back into our front mode. Okay, right leg. We're gonna go ahead and do a keyframe there. We got a keyframe. We don't have a keyframe on our left leg. Let's go ahead and do that there. We'll do the right leg, maybe up a little bit. Like that. Let's bring our whole character down so that we can really see, get him on the right. There we go. And so we want to put a keyframe on our character as well, because as he walks, he's going to go up and down and up and down. So uh, left leg, right leg, we got a keyframe. Left arm is going to be swinging that way. Cool. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Left arm is going to be swinging back. And then right arm is going to be swinging forward. <laughs> okay. And then we'll go to frame 12. And this is where they're going to be, uh, uh, let's see, that will be swinging forward. And then the leg will be straight because it's pushing back. And then we're gonna move, oh, we need to make those keyframes. Left leg, right leg. Let's go ahead and swing that forward. And then our character, we're gonna move up because uh, when you're standing up, See that leg is straight, so it's pushing him up. It's just standard uh, animation techniques. All right, so we got a good walk right there. Disregard the arms for right now. We're gonna wait until we get to frame 24, this next one. Okay, so then we need the left leg. It's going to be pushing all the way back, and right leg is gonna be getting ready to step. And then, oh man, I keep on forgetting to do these keyframes. So right leg is going to push back and then our character needs to go down to the plane. Do, 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 left leg, right leg. It's gonna be stepping there. So let's see, cool. Along the plane, cool. And now let's take the arms. Let's see, and so now that that one is forward, we're gonna swing that one forward create our keyframe, our right arm, we're gonna swing this one back. Cool. You get this little popping sometimes. So sometimes you can just go in there and turn it and just kind of keep it from popping. It gives it this weird look whenever it pops like that, you know? Let's do the right arm. Kind of keep it from popping as well. It's one thing with the IK chain is you sometimes run into that popping where, where it's popping out from being straight. You'll notice it here once we get here too. So we'll go to 36 and then our uh, right leg is the one pushing us forward. So it's gonna be straight. 36, left leg is going to be swinging forward. You'll see a popping there, I bet. Uh, character, we'll probably need to adjust our keyframes. Uh, character right there. Let's see, left leg is going to be swinging forward like that. Right leg is good. Uh, left arm, we are not going to worry about yet. And then go to 48. 
And then what we're going to do is we're actually just going to copy the keyframe from the first one. Go to 48. Yeah. And right leg. I'm hitting command and just dragging the keyframe. Then left arm. We'll probably need to correct some popping in the arms. Move that all the way to 48. Let's see how that looks. Oh, we need to do the character as well. There we go. 48. Yeah, you see some popping in the arms. <laughs> and then we see a little bit of popping right there on the leg. We could adjust the character a little bit because see it's kind of breaking that that plane. So let's just go ahead and fine tune it a little bit. Uh, let's get our left and right arms. So this is our left arm. We don't want it to pop like that. We'll see. Does that get rid of all the popping? Yes, it does. Now let's do our right arm. Do that. Cool. Pop. Okay, pop on the leg right there. Left leg. Let's try that. There you go. Now it's not so obvious. And let's kind of move our character a little bit. Make sure that we stay along the plane the whole time. Right about here, we break it a little bit. Character. Let's move him up just a little bit. Still, all right. Oh, we got to pop somewhere in the arms. Dang it! It's because we when we moved. Let me go back a couple of keyframes. See if I can just move the legs instead. Because that's actually not too bad. Because our character is pretty good. Yeah, there we go. Oh, we got a pop, pop. And you got a pop right there at the end. We just need it not to be so much of a bend. There we go. I think that's good. And so then we're going to make this 47 frames. And you can watch a good little walking loop, which is pretty cool. All right. So there you go. Uh, nice little walking cycle, uh, creating 2D characters in 3D space in Cinema 4D and uh, rigging them using IK chains. Cool. So I uh, hope you like what you saw. Check out our uh, podcast, BroGraph.com, uh, and also uh, check out some more of our tutorials, BroGraph.com. Hit us up on Twitter. Uh, we've got a new plugin coming out for Octane specifically. Uh, it is a lighting plugin, and it is amazing. So that should be coming out soon. Um, I'm Matt Milstead, and we will see you next time. Later, bros. Brograph.com, an online resource for learning critical components of Cinema 4D and After Effects, specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. We give you professional, time-saving tips, shortcuts, and lessons that help give you an edge over your fellow designers. Not only this, but our new Brograph talks help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join us for live sessions, check out our crazy Cinema 4D experiments, or just watch our Fun with BroGraph series, where we show you practical applications for techniques learned in previous tutorials. Do this from the beginning, and your client is going to respect that, and they're going to respect you, and they're going to respect your time. Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead, all with a slight dash of dry humor peppered in. 
real nice banana. Brograph.com, your source for tutorials that will help you thrive in the motion graphics industry. Don't just play around with Cinema 40 and After Effects, master it, and make money by becoming indispensable at your workplace. We don't care how you get here folks, just get here! Subscribe now to Brograph Tutorials. It's pretty good I guess.